to boldly go where no one has gone. There's a really crappy Star Trek joke in here somewhere. Welcome to the Commander Dojo. I'm your friendly neighborhood host, Lex. Today, I'm going to be showcasing for you my $60 take on a Cercara the Bold budget deck. Mono Red has plenty of commanders that make goblin tokens or play around with artifacts, but Cercara the Bold is different. She's entirely mechanically unique. Turning burn spells like Flame Rift or Reign of Embers into effects that essentially draw you four cards is extremely powerful. Two of my favorite spells alongside Sir Kara are Mana Clash and Fiery Confluence. Assuming your luck is an absolute ass like mine is, with Mana Clash for only one red mana, you're gonna draw yourself into as many as three to five spells. Fiery Confluence, on the other hand, can be a four mana draw nine. Sir Kara is far from perfect though. Her ability is essentially use it or lose it. Any spells that you don't play that turn will end up exiled for the remainder of the game. This means we have to rely heavily on mana ramp in the form of mana rocks to help us get ahead and have as much mana as possible. We're also making full use of ritual spells like Seething Song and Mana Geyser. When your mana is low, these ritual spells give you exactly what you need to keep the fireballs flowing. As unique as Sir Kara is, only being a 3-3 makes her not great in combat and particularly susceptible to our sweeper effects. It's for this exact reason I've included spells like Magebane Armor. Not only does Magebane Armor make Sir Kara into a 5-7, it protects her from any and all damage that would be dealt to her, meaning we now get to set our opponent's mana dorks on fire without having to worry about burning Sir Kara along the way. And because every badass knight needs an armory full of badass equipment, I've also included Blazing Sunsteel and Rune Chanter's Pike. Blazing Sunsteel gives gives Sir Kara a slight power boost, but its biggest utility is that it gives us additional Sir Kara triggers with every burn spell we play. Rune Chanter's Pike, on the other hand, takes full advantage of the fact that combined, there are over 30 instant and sorcery spells in this list. So if you end up in a late game scenario where you can take full advantage of Sir Kara potentially taking somebody out with commander damage, Rune Chanter's Pike is perfect for the job. And of course we have a shiny pair of swift foot boots at our disposal. Hexproof is annoying as hell to play around. Many Sir Kara decks are glass cannons that are reliant on being the fastest deck at the table and storming off on the second or third turn of the game. Since I'm on a $60 budget with this list, I don't have the luxury of spells like Mana Crypt or Mana Vault. This means I have to be fully prepared to play a little defense, and that's why I absolutely love effects like Kazul Tyrant of the Cliffs and Smoke. There's only 10 creatures total in this list, which means more often than not, any filthy green mages at the table are going to have a decisive creature advantage over us. If we don't have effects that slow them down, or at the very least make them think twice about swinging into us with their full board, we're going to have a hard time. And because I'm a bit of a spiky asshole, I've included effects like Burning Sands. If your opponents are relying heavily on small value creatures like mana dorks or hate bears, Burning Sands, when paired with any of our sweeper effects, is not only going to take their creature off the board, but also their lands. It may take a little bit of time to get things going, but once you have your engine online, chaining off an absolutely massive grape shot or ignite memories is going to absolutely devastate the table. Storm spells such as these take a considerable amount of spells having been cast already in the turn to work super effectively, but with creatures like Torbran and Ember Maw Hellion at our disposal, we can make sure that once we chain off a grape shot or ignite memories, it sticks. And if casting a particular spell once doesn't get the job done, Backdraft Hellkite will give you a chance to do it twice in the same turn, which almost always ensures that somebody at the table is going to die. If you're looking for something fun and mechanically unique in red to try out, I'd highly suggest you take Bold on a budget for a spin. And as always, the deck list is in the description below, so check that out and let me know what you think. And with the upkeep out of the way, let's get right into the game. Play Magic the Gathering online against a bunch of total randos. I've got my work cut out for me today. Joyra of the Gitu is best known for powering out huge spells early in the game. Loris, on the other hand, is an artifact recursion machine. In Korvold, he needs no introduction. He's one of Jun's most powerful commanders. I've got everything I could want in this hand. Fast mana, protection, quality burn spells, and recursion. This is a snap keep. Turn one soul ring into arcane signet. A pretty damn good opener. 
Loris is going to start things off with a Mishra's Bobble. This card has the potential to reap some serious value over the course of a long game. I'm fortunate to top deck another land here on turn 2. I'm going to slam down Sir Kara and set myself up for a big turn 3. Joyra is going to get in on the ramp game with a Mind Stone. Loris, on the other hand, is going to play a Knight's Whisper and draw themselves some extra cards. Not to be outdone, Corvold is going to far seek themselves a Smoldering Marsh into play. I've got plenty of mana and an early game advantage here. I'm going to continue to press that with a Mana Clash. My absolute ass luck only gets me two Sir Kara the Bold triggers here, but it's okay. We're going to play out this Mind Stone for some extra ramp and use that to get Mage Bane Armor into play. Just to assert a little dominance, I'm going to slap Joyra for three. The resulting Sir Kara trigger will exile away a Molten Disaster. And not a moment too soon, Joyra is going to make her suspend having ass onto the battlefield. Luris is going to start fiddling around with their Ouija board and use a Dark Ritual to power Luris out onto the battlefield. Then they'll recur Mishra's Bobble and keep their card draw engine churning. Corvold's going to play out a Squee the Immortal. This card makes me extremely paranoid of incoming food chain combos. This freshly drawn Pyretic Ritual is going to help me equip Sir Kara with Mage Bane Armor. Then I'll sweep the board with Slagstorm, and now that the way is clear, I'll punch Corval directly in the face for 5. Joyra's gonna start off their Eldrazi party with a Reality Smasher. Luris, on the other hand, is going to get out some light stacks pieces in the form of Torpor Orb and Authority of the Consoles. Corvold's finally going to enter the battlefield, but his ability won't trigger and he'll enter tapped thanks to Luris. I've used up a lot of my firepower, but hopefully Backdraft Hellkite will help me get some of it back. God, I love this dragon. Holy amazeballs, can you believe it? Joyra is going to play even more tentacle monsters, this time in the form of Conduit of Ruin, and Conduit of Ruin will tutor a Deceiver of Forms to their hand. Loris seems to be lacking tentacle monsters of their own, but they are going to re-enter the battlefield and recur Mishra's Bobble and crack it again for a little more card draw. Corvold's going to power themselves up a little bit with a fetch land and draw a card. Then they're going to follow things up with everybody's favorite insect, Caustic Caterpillar. Then Squee the Immortal's going to do just about the only thing he's good at and return from the graveyard. It's time to get this backdraft Hellkite airborne. We're going to slap Loris around a little bit and give all of our instants and sorceries flashback. This time around, Mana Clash is going to net me three spells, but unfortunately those spells aren't particularly great on the current board state. I'm going to flash back Pyretic Ritual for a little mana boost, then I'll tap down Sir Kara to see what I have on top. It's a Roiling Vortex. Not great. Luckily, I've still got a Slagstorm that I can flash back. I'm going to do that to net four more Sir Kara triggers. It's far from perfect, but I'll take what I can get. I'll ramp a bit with Everflowing Chalice and use that to help power me into an Ember Maw Hellion. Joyra's not going to waste any time, and they'll slam down the Deceiver of Forms they tutored for on their last turn. Then they'll send old Reality Smasher my way to slap me around a bit. Back on Luris' turn, they're going to activate their Gyre Reach Sanitarium, forcing everybody at the table to draw a card, then discard a card. I'm going to draw yet another land, so my discard choice here is pretty obvious. Dance of the Dead is then going to bring Villas Broker of Blood into play. Let the games begin. Luris is then going to come my way and claw me in the face for three. And at Luris's end step, Corvold is going to ass trophy Sir Kara right back into the command zone. On Corvold's turn, they're going to continue the ramp party with a roiling regrowth and follow that up with a soul ring. And with all of this mana at their disposal, we'll power out a Sir Conrad the Grim. Volcanic Spray is a great top deck here, but I need to buy time. I'm going to replay Sir Kara, then suit up the Hellkite with the Mage Bane armor, giving myself an effective blocker. Back in Joyra's Tentacle Paradise, she's going to play out a Breaker of Armies. At the beginning of combat, Deceiver of Form is going to turn Joyra's entire board state into a gaggle of Aeon Chroniclers. Weird, but also cool. At Joyra's end step, Villas is going to send Caustic Caterpillar straight to hell in the name of card draw. Luris will start things off with a Dance of the Dead trigger, which they'll pay to untap Villas. They'll put a Shock Land into play triggering Villas, and with 11 cards in hand, they'll start emptying it out by playing out a Blood Pet, follow that up with a Skull Clamp, and finally, put a Recruiter of the Guard into play. 
Corvold's going to get a sack outlet in the form of the Saraseer into play. Then they're going to start absolutely butchering Squee in the name of value. The only downside of this value train is every time Sir Conrad triggers whenever Squee dies, it draws Loris two cards thanks to Villas. They'll end their turn by getting protection on board in the form of Sylvan Safekeeper. And now that I managed to make it another go around the table, it's time to start spraying my volcanic load all over the place. Naturally, before volcanic spray resolves, Corvold's going to sack off all of his small creatures to get as much value as possible. Two hours later. It took a while, but I finally managed to get to my four Cercara triggers. And now Loris has 21 Bruh. cards in hand, Corvald is an 11-11, and Joy was just hanging out making a hentai. As usual, my luck continues to be ass, but it's okay. I have a ritual spell in hand, and I can flash back volcanic spray. But before I start spraying magma everywhere, safety first. Sir Kara needs her Mage Bane armor. This time around, though, my luck isn't quite so bad. I managed to salvage an earthquake from amongst the new spells that I've acquired, and I can now keep this chain going. Earthquake is going to be just enough to take out these pesky Eldrazi, and draw me into four new spells, and amongst these new spells, I find a Price of Progress. Price of Progress is going to be just enough to take both Loris and Korvald out of the game. Bye, have a great time! I drew a metric ass ton of cards. What did it cost? Everything. I'm going to swing all in at Joyra, which will give Price of Progress flashback, Ooh. and that will be the key to taking Korvold off the table. Bye, have a great time! Joyra's going to do everything they can do right now, which is play out a rapacious one, and then crack their Mind Stone, hoping to find some answers. But they won't find what they're looking for, and they'll scoop it up. I'd like to give a huge shout out to you, the viewer. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'd also like to shout out my opponents. Thank you guys so much for the great games. And that's all for now. Have a great one, and I'll see you next time.